Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're all doing very well. This evening I'm going to be doing another movie review. This movie is a crime film from Russia, Russian language English subs, released in the year 2007, directed by Alexei Balabanov, and this film is called Cargo 200. So Cargo 200 is set in the last stage of the Soviet Union, and the, uh, the title itself is a code name for the soldiers that were fighting in Afghanistan who were killed and brought back to the Soviet Union. So that's going to play a very pivotal role in the storytelling that I'm not going to spoil, but that's where Cargo 200 comes from. So the story itself centers upon this young lady, Lady. She's at a disco. She falls for this very handsome stranger. The stranger, they, they drink together, they dance, they start kissing. And this stranger says, look, they've run out of alcohol. He knows a place where he can get more. So she reluctantly joins him with the promise that he's going to return her home to a very influential father in the government. And that gives her a, a sense of security. But ultimately, it's a false sense of security because things go from bad to worse for her when her mysterious stranger passes out because he's so drunk once he gets to the cabin. Now when she goes to look for this guy because she waited in the car, she realizes that there are some very strange people in this cabin and she starts to feel very unsafe. But then her night gets even worse when she falls victim to a very psychotic police officer who kidnaps her and subjects her to all kinds of horrors. And so whether or not the influential father of this young woman can find her before it's too late is something you're going to have to find out for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on Cargo 200. Nasty, depressing, horrifying, uh, grueling are uh, just some words that I can use to describe Cargo 200. This is a film I didn't really know too much about, but the reason why I wanted to see it was number one, it is a Russian film, and Russian cinema and Russia in general is incredibly interesting. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to Russian cinema, I'm not overly familiar with it. Andrei Zigayensev is one of my favorite directors. He is a Russian. His films really impress me. But when it comes to the darker side of Russian cinema, then it's not something that I'm terribly familiar with. So I really wanted to branch out and experience more. Russian stuff and Alexei Balabanov was a director that caught my eye because he has a lot of controversy around him is that he's created films that a lot of people were very upset with and Cargo 200 was known as his most controversial film and so I thought what is this going to produce and those words that I've just uh, used to describe the film are definitely justified is because this is a film that is going to upset the average viewer so I have to stress and I cannot stress this enough do not watch this film if you are not used to the works of Gaspar Noé, Lars von Trier, and those provocateurs, because Alexei Balabanov is definitely a name that you can put right up there with the great directors of Extremity. So what I believe this film is, is what a Serbian film tried to do. Now a Serbian film, the director, uh, he wanted to use the extremity in a Serbian film to give you the impression of what living in Serbia was like at that time. But I believe it got lost in its, in, in its extremity, is that it was trying too hard to provoke an audience, therefore it loses that sort of message, that social message that this director wanted to create. So I just think that Sridan Spasajevic, who directed a Serbian film, he said that it was a political sort of movie to kind of give the movie an excuse for existing. I just think it was there just to push the envelope so hard and to see how many people people could get angry, but Alexei Balabanov in Cargo 200, this is everything that Sridan Spasajevich was trying to do in a Serbian film, in that giving you a, a look at extremity and a look at cruelty and sheer depravity, but using it in a way that is a symbolization of something greater, is that this is the fall of the Soviet Union. This is a very, very depressing time. You know, these people were put under a lot of pressure and the cruelty and the harsh sort of reality that these people were facing was put into one character, and this one character is this beautiful young lady, the innocence of this lady against the corruption of this regime, the corruption of the Soviet Union. And when it was falling, the lack of security that those people had at that time was all put all into this young woman, the hardships she goes through, the terrifying and the horrific crimes that were inflicted upon her was a symbolization of something greater. And so when you see extreme things happening in this movie, I believe that they were there for a stronger purpose. And that's what made the film so good, is that this is a movie that I didn't enjoy, but I could really appreciate as far as extreme cinema is concerned. The cinematography, I thought it was very authentic looking. I actually felt like I was watching a movie from the Soviet Union era, is that it was very dry on the coloring. It was a very 
unfair, very harsh sort of landscape, just watching the film made me feel cold. And so that coldness is not only put through in the visuals, but it's put through in the characters. These characters are very devoid of emotion. There's no happiness in the film. And this young girl is probably the happiest in the movie to start with, but that happiness and that innocence and that beauty is just pulled away from her so violently and so harshly that I just couldn't help but feel absolutely horrified at what I was seeing, is that this is an incredibly hard film to watch. It is an extreme movie, but as I said, where a Serbian film failed and where this movie really succeeded is not pushing the envelope as far as extremity is concerned to a point of caricature, is that I thought some of the things that happened in a Serbian film, the director was just trying way too hard to push that limit, but in this film, it's not overly graphic, but what you see in this movie, I just thought was incredibly ghastly, is that it was, in, it, it, the ghastly sort of presence that this movie has is intensified through the visuals, through the script, and through the lack of emotion that these people had. And so I thought as though I was watching something that was so much of, uh, more of a dimension than just watching uh, these character, these human beings unfold in a way of individuality. I actually thought as though this was a symbolization of a nation, a symbolization of, you know, just uh, a nation that was falling apart at the seams and how cruel that can be and how cruel living uh, uh, how cruel it was living in the Soviet Union during this era so I thought the acting was actually very peculiar I will say it was a great a great performance from everyone involved especially this young lady uh, it, it took a very brave performance from her as uh, you will know exactly what I mean when you watch the film her performance is very good, but the reason why I say it was peculiar is because I felt as though they didn't have any happiness, as I stated earlier, is that they didn't have any happiness, is that they were very dry. And once again, that gives you the impression that these are not just characters that you can connect with on an individual basis, but on a widespread basis. And so there's a lot of symbolic sort of meaning that this film has, and that's what I appreciated about it the most, is that it would have been so easy. A lot of these extreme directors, they just go out there and they just throw excessive gore, they give you scenes that are very taboo, and that's very easy to do, but when you've got symbolic meaning and a lot more behind it, it makes it even more horrifying is because it knows exactly what it's trying to do, and it's not just trying to do something that's rebellious, it's not trying to do something that's immature, it's using that extremity for a very strong purpose at actually depicting life during these very challenging times. And so the ending, I just was gobsmacked, I thought this is incredibly depressing, and it's everything that you would expect from European cinema and so this is a film that as I said I can't stress this enough I, I can't stress this enough do not watch this film if you are easily offended, if you are sensitive, because this is a very cruel film. It's matter of fact, and it's basically not making any apologies for it, which is the reason why I appreciate it as much as I did. So overall, for Cargo 200, go and see this film if you are prepared to see a movie that was just completely crunch your soul. And for that, I have to give it credit. I'm going to give this movie four stars. All right, guys, that's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, keep watching movies, and I'll see you later.